Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make, budget friendly, and delicious. So if you'd like some weeknight meal ideas for your family, just keep watching. For dinner this first night, I made creamy Italian chicken. So if you saw last week's What's for Dinner video, I mentioned that my husband and I had the C word. And on this particular day, we were supposed to go over to my parents' house for dinner. And of course, we ended up not doing that. So I made this really for two reasons. One, it just sounded really good and comforting. I wasn't feeling well. This is one of our family favorite recipes. And two, it was using things that I had on hand. Now I've shared this many, many times before on my channel. In fact, I think pretty much everything in my What's For Dinner video today, I've shared before, but again, with not feeling well this week, I really just stuck to things that I know and things that were easy and that, you know, I know that we enjoy. Um, but I have a whole separate video on this. I'll link it in the description box below. Super easy. All you do is take some chicken breasts, dry Italian dressing, a little bit of chicken broth, cream cheese, and cream of chicken soup. I cook that on, you can cook it on low or high. You just want to cook it until your chicken is at least 165 degrees internal temperature. Once that is done, I like to remove the chicken breasts and dice them up. You can also just shred the chicken add that back to your crock pot and then some people serve it over pasta you can also do mashed potatoes we really like it over just plain white rice and that was our dinner this night so good um another variation that i see to this recipe a lot is instead of the dry italian dressing and uh chicken broth a lot of people use the olive garden italian dressing whichever way you want to go this recipe is delicious if you haven't tried it i highly highly recommend you give it a try for dinner this night, I made some Trader Joe's frozen meals. I wanted to clean some space out of the freezer and was also just going for something easy. I have this bulgogi beef fried rice with kimchi. We've tried this once uh, before. It's pretty good. Again, got it at Trader Joe's. And then I have the mandarin orange chicken. While I was getting this from my freezer, I also found this package of spring rolls. I got this at the Dollar Tree. And then I have some of the Sweet Baby Ray's red chili sauce and some yum yum sauce in my fridge. So for the mandarin orange chicken, I like to cook the chicken in the air fryer. I cook it at about 360 degrees for five or six minutes, give it a toss, cook it for another five or six minutes. While that's finishing up, I add the sauce to a bowl, pop it in the microwave for uh, maybe 30 or 45 seconds, and then toss the chicken with the sauce. And then for the fried rice, I just warmed it up in the skillet according to the package instructions. For those spring rolls, I placed them into the air fryer, sprayed them with a little cooking spray. I cooked them at 400 degrees for about three minutes, turned them over, sprayed them with a little more spray, and cooked it for another three or four minutes until they were golden brown. And then we just had some of the yum yum sauce and sweet chili sauce. Super easy dinner, but really yummy. For dinner this next night, I did not feel like cooking. I was not feeling well at all this day, so we just ordered pizza from Papa John's. We got a large, I think it's called the works. My husband calls it a garbage pizza. Um, we make a few changes, so we don't do the Italian sausage. We remove the onions, and then we add uh, banana peppers, pineapple, and Roma tomatoes and spinach. And then for me, I got a medium pizza. They had some kind of special three topping medium pizza for 10 bucks or something like that. Uh, so I got a chicken bacon ranch with diced tomatoes. It was the first time I had a chicken bacon ranch pizza from Papa John's and it was actually pretty tasty. It wasn't bad. For dinner this night, we had leftover pizza and we also had pizza for lunch the next day. <laughs> we had pizza for days, but hey, at least I didn't have to cook. So that was a plus in my book. For some odd reason, spaghetti has been sounding really good to me, so I made Million Dollar Spaghetti. This recipe is from the Plain Chicken, and I think I've forgot to mention, I'm sorry, my head is cloudy, um, but any recipes or previous videos that I've got, I'll of course have it linked in the description box below. But this is from the Plain Chicken. I've made this before on my channel. This is so good. It's like a cross between a lasagna and spaghetti, um, so I highly recommend you give this recipe a try. I'll show you um, what I'm going to use to make it. All right, here's everything that I'm using. And a quick note, I am having the recipe. So I've got some sour cream, cottage cheese, softened cream cheese, garlic powder, parsley flakes, and I'm going to mix that together in this small bowl. In this separate bowl, I'm going to add in some cooked 
ground beef. This is ground beef that I had already in my freezer. I just pulled it out and thawed it. I think the recipe calls for Italian sausage and I've also made this with ground turkey. I'm going to combine the cooked ground beef along with some pasta sauce, use your favorite. And then I have some shredded Parmesan cheese and some shredded mozzarella cheese. I have the oven preheating to 350 degrees. I've got my softened cream cheese in this bowl. I'm going to add in the cottage cheese and then the sour cream. Now, I've mentioned this before, but I don't eat cottage cheese by itself. I don't mind it in baked pasta dishes. I really can't decipher it. So if you're a cottage cheese hater like I am, I'd still give this recipe a try again. You, you really can't tell between the pasta and the sauce and the other cheeses. I'm gonna add the garlic powder and the parsley flakes. Stir that until it's combined really well, and then I'm going to set that to the side. In this next bowl, I'm going to add in some of the pasta sauce, as well as my cooked ground beef. Now, you could, of course, add seasonings to this if you would like, but I'm just going to kind of keep it simple. I'm going to stir that until it's mixed together really well and set that to the side. Now in this pot here, the recipe does not say to do this, but I like to boil up my spaghetti noodles, drain them, and then mix it with a little bit of the pasta sauce. So to layer this, we're gonna kinda do it like a lasagna. I have sprayed this casserole dish with some cooking spray. I'm going to add in half of the noodles and spread them out. Then we're going to add the cheese mixture, spread that out, and then add the remaining noodles, spread that into a single layer, and then add our sauce on top. You're going to sprinkle that with some of the cheeses and then this is going to go into the preheated oven uncovered and it bakes for about 45 minutes. Now, as you can see, I was getting to the top of my casserole dish here. So just to be on the safe side, I placed a baking sheet underneath it in case it baked over. Now, to go along with this, I'm making the Cozy Cooks Cheesy Garlic Bread. I made this before and shared it. This is delicious. This is so good. Again, I'll have the recipe linked down in the description box below. Here's what I'm going to use. So I've got some Italian bread, some mozzarella cheese, Parmesan cheese. I think the recipe calls for grated Parmesan, but I have some of this shredded on hand that I need to use up. It calls for Italian dressing. I have some of these little cups of uh, Olive Garden Italian dressing that I got at the Dollar Tree. We need, of course, some garlic for our garlic bread and then butter. And I've also got some parsley flakes, which I don't believe the recipe calls for, but I wanted to add it as a little garnish to the finished bread. In this bowl, I have the softened butter, minced garlic, some of the mozzarella cheese, and then the Italian dressing. Now, I know that might sound a little bit weird, but some recipes for garlic bread do call for olive oil. So if you think about it, I mean, that's basically what this is, uh, along with some seasonings and other flavorings. And when I first saw this recipe, I thought my husband would really like it because when we go to Olive Garden, he loves to dip his breadsticks in their Italian dressing. Um, and I was right, he loves this and raves about it. Um, so I'm gonna mix that until it's combined really well. And then I took that loaf of bread I cut it in half uh, horizontally, and then I cut it in half lengthwise. I halved the original recipe, just for the two of us. And then I'm gonna take that butter, spread it over each half of the bread, and then add a little of the Parmesan cheese and mozzarella cheese. This is going to go into a preheated oven, set at 350 degrees, bake for about 10 minutes. Then you're gonna increase the heat to 450 degrees and bake it for another eight to 10 minutes until it starts to get brown. Here's the finished spaghetti out of the oven. I did sprinkle it with some parsley flakes. Now, just like with the lasagna, you do wanna let this sit for a little bit before you serve it up. So I let it sit for about 15 minutes. Here is the finished garlic bread. And again, I just sprinkled it with some parsley flakes. All right, here are the plates. So we've got some of the spaghetti, the garlic bread, and then I made some salads, just lettuce, tomato, cucumber, radish, shredded shredded if i could talk cheddar cheese some bacon pieces and then i did some semi-homemade ranch dressing just use the hidden valley ranch instructions this was dinner this night this was so incredibly delicious the next night was another leftover night we had plenty of the million dollar spaghetti and garlic bread left over just warmed up the spaghetti in the microwave for the garlic bread i did pop it into the air fryer i think i cooked it at like 320 degrees for maybe two or three minutes just to warm it up. And that was our dinner the next night. And I even had leftovers for lunch the next day. So I love this week making dinners that 
we could eat on for a few days. You know, when you're not feeling well, that is the way to go. Cook something once and eat on it multiple times. For the last dinner in this week's video, I made blackened salmon and mango salsa. I shared this maybe a month or so ago on my channel. I'll try to find that video and link it in the description box below, but I'd gotten some salmon from a Good Chop order and we loved this meal back when I made it. And so as soon as I got the salmon in the Good Chop haul, I was like, I need to make this again. So let me show you what I'm gonna use to make it. All right, for the mango salsa itself, I don't really use a recipe, but I have one that I kind of loosely follow. I will link it in the description box below. You'll of course need mangoes. You can absolutely use fresh. Uh, I have a hard time though with mangoes and avocados both being ripe. So I prefer to use just canned mangoes. I usually get the ones in juice, but Walmart didn't have it this time. So I just got the ones in syrup and drained it really well. And then some cilantro, lime juice i didn't have any fresh so i'm just using the bottle some finely diced red onion jalapeno and then a little bit of salt i'm making some coconut rice as one of my side dishes i've shared this before i'll have the recipe typed out below it's just instant white rice some cream of coconut you can also use a pina colada mix and then some water and a little bit of salt then I had a large zucchini in my fridge that I needed to use up, so I cut it into kind of half moons. I'm going to toss it with some olive oil, salt, pepper, and then some of this Trader Joe's 21 Seasoning Salute. This was the first time that I used it, and it was actually good on the vegetables. I would use that again. All right, and for the salmon, I thawed it in the refrigerator, and I patted it really well with some paper towels. You can season it with whatever you'd like. I'm using some of this blackening seasoning from Kroger as well as some of the seafood seasoning from Auntie Nono's. The salmon, you can leave the skin on if you'd like. Sometimes I leave it on, but on this particular night, I decided to take it off. So I removed the skin and then seasoned both sides of the salmon uh, with those seasonings. I cooked it in a skillet over about medium high heat that just has a little bit of olive oil as well as butter. All right, here is that finished salmon. Here's the finished zucchini. Once I toss the zucchini with the olive oil, the salt, pepper, and the Trader Joe's seasoning, I cooked it in the air fryer at 400 degrees for about six or seven minutes, tossed it, and then cooked it for another six or seven minutes. And here's that mango salsa. And a quick note, I like to put the salsa together the first thing and then pop that into the refrigerator, just allow the flavors to kind of come together while I'm making everything else. Here's the finished plate. So we have some of the salmon with the salsa, the zucchini and the coconut rice. And that was dinner this night. All right, that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you liked this video and that you got some dinner inspiration from it. If so, please hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.